Hello, my name is John Rose. Today I'm going to take a closer look at the raw food, cooked food connection between the Fermi paradox and our role as the guardians on this planet. This is actually something I've been thinking about for some time. I even explained it in several of my videos I produced way back in 2015 that were part of an 11-bar video series I called The Ultimate Solution, where I gave the definitive answer to, answers to three of the most important questions that we face as a species. Why do we have so many problems? Why aren't we solving our problems? And how do we solve our problems? The first three parts of this 11-part video series were an introduction and ultimately the answer, the definitive answer to those three questions. And the remaining eight parts of that video series went over all of the other important pieces of the puzzle that I've listed in my special teaching tool I call the ultimate schematic. Now, to make this simple, just think of the ultimate schematic as a map, or better yet, two maps in one. One map helps us get out of Plato's cave so we can go where few have gone and we can see what few have seen. And of course, the other map helps us get back to paradise, which is where we're supposed to be. Now, this entire video was prompted by an article I read just a few days ago where they're saying we may have reached the point of no return. That's what we're being told. Of course, they're going to blame it on us when it's not within our control. And then those things are within a control. They'll say it's not our fault. That's how we're being tricked about things. But the point here was a comment made by Noam Chomsky. And he was talking about the Fermi paradox. And he had an explanation for it. There's lots of explanations for this uh, paradox. That's based on the Drake equation. For you guys not familiar with the Drake equation, that's a formula that determines how many other planets could exist in our universe that would have, that could sustain life like planet Earth? It wasn't that long ago where the study came out and they had 60 million planets that were similar to planet Earth that could sustain life. Now the Fermi paradox had to do with if there are so many other people, why don't we have any proof of it? Why don't we see them? Why can't we go out and see them, their effect in what we look at? Because we've only been around for a short period of time relative to all uh, many other civilizations that could have been so long ago, they could have had plenty of time if they kept advancing to show evidence they were around in, in the entire universe, pretty much. But anyway, Noam Chomsky had, a, had one explanation. He said the reason why we don't see proof, now keep in mind this is the, the Fermi paradox was back in 1950, and uh, there was no proof, now we have what we say are proof that UFOs exist, and that's another subject, but let's go back and stick with the paradox. And Noam Chomsky said he believed that it had to do with the fact that there must be something inherently wrong with all higher life, our intelligence, uh, on, on every planet, so that they basically annihilate themselves, and they don't have the moral capacity to, to solve their problems. Again, I've thought about this a long time ago, and it has nothing to do with a moral capacity, it has to do with the wisdom. We lack the wisdom to learn from our mistakes and overcome this negative ripple effect that I'm sure has happened on every planet on this planet or, or in this, in this uh, universe. Anyway, if you go back to my 11 part video series, in two of my videos I explained piece number nine, which is one of the 21 main problems of knowledge. Remember what Socrates said long ago, the problem of knowledge is the key to all of our problems. I got so excited when I read that, I go, yes, I know. I found the knowledge we're missing, and I know there are reasons why we don't know. And I've been working on that for a long time. I came up with 21 main problems of knowledge, two forms of ignorance, 12 sources of false knowledge, seven wellness factors. When you look at those ability factors, those sources of false knowledge, one of them would be piece number nine, and that's where we have a combination of our neocortex and our reptilian brain. As I mentioned in this video, Back in 2015, there are 11 main events that have drastically changed the fate of mankind. The first one happened about two million years ago, about two-thirds into our existence. Put the human existence on a football field, that'd be real, real close to the 67-yard line if we kept going all the way to the end. That's when 
Our neocortex nearly doubled in size, going from around 400 cc's to 800 cc's, and of course it kept growing until we started devolving. But that's the first main event. Again, this is how life progresses. I'm sure everywhere on this planet, as higher life keeps adding more brains on top, maybe that's our problem, we need one more brain on top. We started with that reptilian brain that's really in control over our neocortex. But what happened to us is that neocortex doubled in size, and what that did is it allowed us to master things we had never mastered before, or any other animal on this planet can master. And I've identified five main things that we mastered that have drastically changed the fate of mankind, and this is, goes back to what Noam Chomsky said, there's an inherent problem with all higher life, because, and he didn't say this, but what I said long ago is I know what happens to us as our brains get smarter, we do things we hadn't done before. And with all new knowledge comes potential for making a bad application. Potential for evil, if you will, if we apply that knowledge to something we need to live. The opposite of live, L-I-V-E, is evil, E-V-I-L, that's what they tried to warn us about long ago. Could that be the origins of the word evil? I'm pretty sure it is. We're doing things that are optimists out of nature. And what do we do when we master something? We apply it to what we need. It alters the need. It alters us. We've got a feedback system. That's what illnesses and ill behaviors are for. One of the worst ill behaviors we have is the very first bad application to the first thing we mastered. In essence, destroyed one of our senses to a point where instead of having six strong senses like we're supposed to, we got five and a little bit of fraction. Our sixth sense, our spidey sense, the one that allows us to feel connected to everything around us. When we don't have that, we have the wrong mentality, and that's what got us in trouble. Just about every problem we have is because we have the wrong mentality. Got to go back to the very first thing we did, the first bad application to understand everything on this planet, because if you don't understand the raw food, cooked food connection, first mistake, took the first time we mastered fire, start cooking our food. If you don't understand that connection, you won't be able to understand Fermi's paradox or any other, anything else that's profound. It's such an important piece of the puzzle because in most cases what people do when they try to understand the Fermi paradox, they just go fighting shadows in Plato's cave. As Buddha once said, only those who go where few have gone can see what few have seen. This is what Socrates meant when he talked about the allegory of Plato's cave. When you come out of Plato's cave, no man's an island, you can't escape Plato's cave when everyone else is down in the cave, you've got to go back down into the cave. And you've got to look at how everyone's looking at shadows and how they're being tricked and how they're being molded so that you can help them understand they have to detoxify and de-indoctrinate because they've got so much baloney in their brains, they're in this cave of ignorance and they can't escape. And many times they go up a level when they identify there are psychopaths behind the curtain, but that's just going up a level. Got to come out of the cave completely. And that's what Plato met in Plato's Republic when he talks about the allegory of Plato's cave and he talks about the philosopher kings. The only people who are qualified to help us get out of this cave of ignorance are people who've been where no one has been yet or where a few have gone. That's why Voltaire said, every man is a creature of the age in which he lives. Very few are able to raise themselves above the ideas of the time. No, we just glide with the stream of the crowd, don't we? We're in Plato's cave. We're looking at shadows. We're fighting shadows. What do you think our governments do? They're fighting shadows. What do you think most of you guys are doing? You're fighting shadows. If you don't understand the first mistake we made and the profound implications it has, then you're being distracted. We're either getting reconnected or we're getting distracted. Almost everything we do is a distraction. We're fighting shadows in Plato's cave. And again, this is what Plato tried to help us understand and Socrates tried to help us understand. We're fighting shadows. Even when we try to fight the psychopaths behind the curtain that are molding the masses' brains so they don't have an original thought, you're being distracted. These sick people are just a reflection of the rest of us. All of us have to understand the role we play when it comes to getting out of Plato's cave. We all got to come out of Plato's cave. We got to realize the value and the importance of that very first mistake we made in correcting it. 
The value comes from correcting the mistake we made long ago, but we're still making it today. The dark side of our behavior is not part of our DNA. It's not part of our nature. We're not born this way. The only thing we're born in is, a, is in a society that attacked early. We're given false knowledge. We think it's okay to cook our food. It's not a sin. It's an art of cooking. Look, these chefs are magicians, just like our doctors are magicians. The common link between the two, they've had magicians teach them how to be magicians. So doctors do right, cause and effect. <laughs> Don't look at the cause. You've got diabetes. You've got arthritis. You've got cancer. You've got all these diseases illnesses don't look at what you're doing it's a distraction same thing with our chefs they take that first thing we master and it alters our food it creates brand new colors aromas and flavors that never existed before it's what partly what plato meant when he said whatever deceives men seems to produce a magical enchantment yes we are under the hunger spell our taste buds, our eyes, and our nose, they've all been molested with things that should never exist. And then we misperceive our withdrawal symptoms, that all gone feeling in the stomach, as hunger. It's not hunger. You're not supposed to feel an all gone feeling in your stomach. That's a morbid sensation. It's a withdrawal symptom from eating unnatural food, food that's been altered either by not eating your biophotons or not eating your species-specific diet, which we all have. And this is so simple to understand, folks. Unfortunately, there's not a whole lot anybody can say to convince anybody what I'm saying is true, but everyone out there, every one of you guys, can prove this to yourself. If you want scientific proof, take a solid food vacation and within days you will see with your own eyes all the proof you need it's scientific proof it's concrete verifiable proof that victor hugo knew what he meant when he said we got a serpent in our belly that it disrupts the equilibrium between the body and the soul some other all crime and vice the colon is a heavy burden it's full of a bunch of caca doesn't belong in there and if you don't believe me, take a solid food vacation within one week. The average overweight American here, woman will lose seven pounds, man will lose 10. In one month, the average woman 20, the average guy 30. Most of that's gonna be the serpent in our belly. So those are two huge contributing factors right there, my friends. Serpent in our belly, and we don't have enough biophotons in the nucleus of our cells emitting light and helping us connect to everything. When you bump up your biophotons, something happens to you, it changes your mentality. You realize that you are all one with everything and that the only way you can really make your life better is when you make everything around you better. And that's how we'd spend our day. As Aristotle pointed out, all paid appointments absorb and degrade the mind. We're not supposed to be working the way we do. That's not how we're supposed to be spending our day. Life should be simple and enjoyable. All of our needs should be easily met. And if that was our number one priority, if we made sure we had these trees of life growing everywhere, if we made sure those trees were flourishing and we took care of them, we too would be flourishing. We wouldn't be in the dark ages anymore. We'd go back to that paradise we had long ago before we opted out of nature. And every culture talks about it. There's a fall of mankind. We opted out of nature, we did something. Well, what was it that we did? When we look at this piece of the puzzle, you have to understand there's three stages of knowledge. And what we need to be concerned about is what's in the second stage of knowledge, because that's the action category there. That's the action stage. That's when we're doing something. That's important because that's what we got to correct. <laughs> we're doing something wrong. Don't go back into the first stages and look at why we did it. Sure, it's part of the reasons, if you're going to identify the fall of mankind, they're in all three stages. You can describe the fall of mankind in all three stages, but you have to realize what was it specifically that we did in that second stage of knowledge. I've identified that as piece number 95. If you've never heard me say that before, check out my 11-part video series. I'll put a link down below. I always do in all my videos where I explain every piece of the puzzle. Look at the description box and you'll be able to find 
what video was specifically where I talk about piece 95. That's the fall of mankind we have to correct. That is the cooking of our food. Because when we cook our food, it's no longer living. And as Dr. Fritz Albert Pop pointed out, all plants, animals, and fungi emit light from the nucleus of their cells. They're storing the sunlight energy, the coherent sunlight energy that's faster than the speed of light in the nucleus of our cells and can communicate instantaneously to everything in this universe. Now, quantum physicists don't really understand this and their way to explain this phenomenon to them, this quantum entanglement phenomenon to them, is to think, well, there must be multiple universes. Oh, you guys are clueless. If you don't understand what happens when we cook our food, you're not going to be able to understand anything profound because it's at the root of every one of the problems we have. And in the case of the Fermi paradox, it changed our mentality. I'm sure this has happened on other planets. I went back and started looking at how I was talking about this in my videos long ago, and I even contemplated if this is such a common occurrence, I wonder how many different groups of guardians there can be. And I had, came, I had come up with five main groups of guardians based on whether they were able to overcome whatever happened to them that made them start cooking their food initially. So we can speculate all we want what happened in fact, I was just watching a show the other day and they were talking about some gene they identified that is what made our brain grow bigger. They don't know what made the gene come out of nowhere. Maybe just mutated. But this goes back to what I've said so many times and I'll put links down below in other videos where I talk about the raw food, cooked food connection, our perspective and how it relates to politics, how it relates to the principle of autarky and most people never even heard of that word before. So I'll put links down below if you're curious. Start a conversation on my channel if you're curious about any of these topics that I, I ask about or I point out. But most importantly, if you haven't done so yet, you've got to prove what I'm saying is true. You've got to go where few have gone. Because you're either part of the problem or you're part of the solution. You're either getting reconnected or you're getting distracted. You're either going to fight shadows or you're going to realize life is an illusion. We're in Plato's cave. I've done lots of videos on Plato's cave. I'll put links down below. I'll even put a link down below to a video I did a couple years ago where I called it Roses Videos by Categories, where I went through about half of my videos. I put them into about three dozen different categories. So you can look at all my videos on the hero's journey, all my videos on Plato's cave. And you'll see that the only people who are qualified to get us out of this cave of ignorance are those who have gone where few have gone. Those are the philosopher kings. They have a map, they have directions, they know where we are, they can help us get out of this hell that we're in, out of the dark ages, back up to the golden age we had before we made this mistake. And I guarantee you, you guys, if we can ever reach the tipping point and we can finally get enough of us to do this, ow! We're all going to be in for a treat.